The headquarters of the Humane Society should be somewhere around here. Bernard could show up any moment now. Oh, you're the people from earlier. Wait, you're from... the guards? After him! We can't let him get away! <sighs> Give it up, Bernard. <sighs> Mercy, have mercy. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. The Humane Society has done so much good over the years, and yet you have committed such an atrocious deed in its name. Look, I didn't have a choice, okay? My father cared about those blasted animals so much, he didn't bother to take care of his human wife and son at all. While those animals were showered with love, I lived worse than a dog. No one asked. Tell me, how did you first get to know Pierre? Well, after I took over the Humane Society, it gradually became harder and harder to maintain its operations. Until one day, someone suddenly passed me a letter. It said that I could stand to get a large sum of money as long as I helped them to transport some animals abroad. It was only after a few such transports that I finally understood what I was really transporting. But then, Pierre wrote to me, saying that we were already partners in crime and that I better keep cooperating with him if I didn't want to be reported to the guards. You knew it from the very beginning, didn't you? The reason why you had to go through so many steps just to transport some animals. I'd suggest that you confess everything right now if you don't want to add anything else to your list of crimes. <laughs> yes, officer! I would order wooden barrels and flotation devices according to his instructions, and then load the sleeping animals onto a boat. Once I sailed to the location he provided, I would dump everything together into the sea. And a few days after that, I'd come by again in my boat and pick up the animals sleeping in the barrels. Once I had received enough of them, I'd bring them to the harbor to be adopted abroad. That guy Pierre, he was running the entire show. He set up all the meeting times and found all the foreign adopters. Oh, oh and he even supplied all of the goods too. I just did the transport. He was the one who planned out and executed everything else. Look, I don't know, okay? I've never ever met him in person. We've only ever communicated through letters. And when did he send his final letter to you? J just last night. He said that the Marshalsea Phantom is now after him, so he's planning to go into hiding for some time. He didn't mention where he's thinking about going, though, B but he did tell me to look out for the guards. It's been a few days since Pierre's last appearance. I'd wager that he sent that letter after he found his hiding spot. I, I burned them. It was on his orders. I had to burn every letter after reading them. I, I wasn't even allowed to share them with the rest of the society employees. Sure sounds like you're trying to use the lack of witnesses or evidence to pin the blame on Pierre. N no, I swear, this time I'm only telling you the truth. Well, we can check the truth of your statements at the Opera House. I hope you know what'll be coming for you if I were to find any discrepancy between the evidence and the testimony you just gave. I know, I know, I swear I was just telling the truth. <sighs> My thanks to you both. Had it not been for you, I really don't know what would have happened to this case. Bonnie helped, too. <laughs> That's true. It was all thanks to her that Bernard was finally exposed. <laughs> and it looks like she's grown quite fond of you two as well. <sighs> then I'll leave you be. Just let me know if you find any other new leads. Hmm. Huh. 
was that obvious, huh? Well, even though it didn't feel like Bernard was lying, after talking to him, I'm getting an even stronger sense that something's not quite right. We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. Let me activate deduction mode, and consider things again from the top to see if we can find anything new. Is there still anything unresolved or strange that we should try to consider? Well, we've discovered that Bernard is responsible for the trafficking, while Pierre deals with supplying the goods. Is there something else in this scheme that we're missing? Yeah, according to Bernard, Pierre also supplied all of the goods. But if the Marchose Phantom's records are correct, Pierre should have lost all access to the materials required to create the imitation synth. And the Institute has also not reported any theft of their stocks. The Marchose Phantom found Bonnie and the Lefevere pendant at Pierre's residence. That was the beginning point of our investigation. There's no need to rush. Let's see if we can find any other suspicious points about this case. Bernard claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. Is there something wrong with the letter? There's no need to rush. Let's see if we can find any other suspicious points about this case. Perhaps we are now closing in on the truth. Now behave and follow me to the interrogation room. That hurt. Ow! Is everything really over? I still feel like the relationship between Pierre and Bernard is not as simple as it appears. Also, I've had this strange sense that something's off the entire time we've been on the case, and it has only gotten worse. Hmm. Ugh. No good. I've still got nothing, and I'm nearly out of energy. All right, I'll stop thinking about it for now. At the very least, we've made it so that no more animals will suffer like those poor animals did. And that's what I hope. Let's go to the Humane Society and see if there are any animals left that might still need our help. Before my energy for today completely runs out. Was that obvious, huh? We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. 
Is there still anything unresolved or strange? The Marachose Phantom found Bonnie and the Lefevere pendant at Pierre's residence. Why would he leave such an obvious trail for us to follow? Bernard claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. If Bonnie had imitation synth in her body, then she was a liability that had to be recovered at all costs. But if she wasn't carrying anything, then it would have made sense to tell Bernard not to worry. And thinking about it, Bernard only attracted our attention in the first place because he came to look for Bonnie. Could it be that the person who wrote the letter also knew nothing about Bonnie's whereabouts? Or they had a separate goal entirely? Well, we've discovered that Bernard is responsible for the trafficking. Yeah, according to Bernard, Pierre also supplied all of the goods. But if the Marchose Phantom's records are correct, Pierre should have lost all access to the materials required to create the imitation synth. And the Institute has also not reported any theft of their stocks. The final question is, why did I sense that something wasn't right after hearing Bernard's testimony? Even more so than before. Deductive mode deactivated. <sighs> I think we may be close to the actual answer. Now behave, and follow me to the interrogation room. Ah, that hurt. Is there something else you need from me, Traveler? Huh? I see. It all makes sense now. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Look, even our confessed criminal here has no idea what you're saying. Because he has been kept in the dark all along. And I assume it's the same with Pierre. That never quite added up for me. 
why did Pierre feel compelled to return to his home with Bonnie and the Pendant and make them so easy to find for the Marachose Phantom? Both of these things are in stark contrast to his usual meticulous and vigilant behavior. There's only one reasonable explanation. He was following orders, just like Bernard. He probably received the following instructions right before the Phantom came knocking on his door. Bring the cat and the pendant, and our undercover agent will be sure to help you. Unbeknownst to him, however, the third person who wrote that letter to him had long decided to sacrifice him and Bernard to save themselves. What? You can't be serious! There was a third person involved?! If you focus only on Bernard's testimony, it's easy to believe that only Bernard and Pierre were working together. The case appeared extremely simple. Bernard did the trafficking, Pierre the imitation synth production, drugging, and stuffing. W wait But that doesn't make any sense. If that's the actual truth, then as soon as Pierre is caught, he'll explain his side of the story and the third person will... Yep, which is why the third person made sure that Pierre would never be found again. Once they had instructed Pierre to expose himself, the third person wrote to Pierre again, suggesting that everything had been taken care of, and he should take Bonnie and safely return to his base. Of course, Pierre's disappearance at such a sensitive time immediately made him a prime suspect. Knowing that Bonnie had last been seen with him, all the third person would have to do from that point on would be to lead the Phantom to investigate the Humane Society and get Bernard to confess the truth. Wait, so you're saying that the letter I received yesterday, the one that made me think Pierre was still alive, it was also sent by the third person? Is... Is that what happened? <laughs> I'll get back to headquarters right away and reinvestigate this case from the top. Chevra said that assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. Someone among us, however, has been feeding us all kinds of preconceived notions ever since our first meeting. They suggested that Pierre's disappearance was an attempt to escape the judgment of the law, and that Pierre was a scion of the Lefebvre family. But if the disappearance is truly just a cover-up for a murder, then couldn't the true scion have been an illegitimate daughter, rather than an illegitimate son? Huh? <laughs> Haven't you taken this joke a bit too far? You're right. I did let a lot of assumptions get to my head when I first started to talk to you about the case. I'll make sure to correct my behavior. You deliberately fed us lies, but even you could not control every last detail of your plan. There was a flaw in your scheme, and something didn't quite go as planned. Getting the Marchose Phantom to notice Pierre was only the first part of your plan. Had they failed to take notice of the Humane Society, they could have cast a wider net. And you couldn't predict what they might possibly find, if given enough time. This, of course, was the main weakness of your plan. As someone accustomed to acting from behind the scenes, you didn't want to take the risk of personally proposing a raid on the Humane Society. So, you thought about pulling a few more strings, so all of the suspicion would point towards Bernard and his society. Once the Phantom expanded their search, it would only be a matter of time before they found Pierre's base. If a cat last seen with a suspect turned up dead at the imitation synth base, it wouldn't be long until the Phantom would figure out exactly how she had been mistreated and turn their eyes towards the one organization that has been sending boatloads of animals out of Fontaine. It was probably during your ambush of Pierre. You didn't even have the time to check if she had already been stuffed full of imitation synth. Hmm. <laughs> 
Still, you soon found another opportunity. Before long, Bonnie had made her way back into the city and even popped up on the Steambird. Like Bernard, you desperately wanted to confirm the contents of her stomach, so you hurried to find us. Unlike Bernard, however, you were hoping that Pierre did have the time to make her swallow a load of imitation synth. While investigating the suspect's cat, we unexpectedly discovered that the suspect has been smuggling imitation synth using living animals as intermediaries. That was your plan, in any case. With that, you'd have been able to lead the investigation towards the Humane Society. Bonnie had managed to escape before Pierre was able to stuff her full of imitation synth. That part of your plan could no longer be carried out. But as shrewd as you were, you came up with another plan right away. You manipulated the Traveler and I to help you identify Bernard as a key suspect. You used the Lefever name as bait to get us to join your investigation. With two extra bodies around, the Special Patrol is sure to soon take note of the strange event of Bernard somehow having a reason to look for Pierre's cat. <laughs> so, what you're saying is, I went to all that trouble just for the chance that you might put forth the suggestion that would lead you down the wrong path. Of course, you did far more than that. Just now at Lumidus Harbor, were you not the person who highlighted the suspicious activities of the society? Ugh. You even highlighted the society's activities during your compilation of the logs, so they'd be immediately visible to anyone examining the records. Moreover, the logs contained no records of the Port Authority's activities. In other words, your activities. And what are you trying to suggest with that? I am insinuating that you had plenty of opportunities to transfer the raw materials for imitation synth from the harbor to a boat, and then sail over to the meeting place full of floating barrels. And that's how neither the trafficker nor the manufacturer knew there was a third person who supplied the raw materials and surreptitiously operated between them. Pierre manufactured imitation synth using the raw materials you provided, stuffed the animals, and placed the animals back into the barrels. Having received the green light from you as Pierre, Bernard then retrieved his animals and shipped them out of Fontaine once he had received enough for a full batch. This is the truth behind your smuggling ring. I can't believe it. I never put two and two together. You've sure got an extremely lively imagination. So what do you think she's going to say next? Ever thought about a career in writing crime novels, huh? Hmm. <laughs> it appears that it's quite easy to predict what you'll think or say. Then if we apply that to this case, we can also think of a few places to look for incriminating evidence. You know very well that this case will not end until Pierre is found, so you will have him commit suicide out of fear and shame to end the investigation for good. That way, you can also pin the blame for the overseas smuggling activities, the theft of the harbor's confiscated raw materials, and even the Lefever name on him. After all, dead men tell no tales. But you still wanted to appear as if he had sent that last letter to Bernard, so you have to make sure he cannot be found until after Bernard has confessed to the authorities. To do that, you either will hide his body until you've found an appropriate time to set up a fake suicide scene, or you'll dump it someplace where it'll be hard to determine the exact time of death. Submerged in water, for instance. The location would ideally allow you to keep the body hidden for some time while also letting you keep an eye on it. There are only so many options to hide a person's time of death after all. As long as the Phantom investigates each of the possibilities in turn, they'll surely find Pierre's remains. 
especially since, as the prime suspect who will now be taken into custody, you will no longer have the time to move him or set up a fake suicide scene to cover up the murder. How absurd. And on what grounds will you order my arrest? Don't think for a second that your spouts of nonsense will amount to any kind of real argument. After all, I'm... Elodie Lefebvre! As the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, I hereby declare you as a suspect in the case. If you have any objections, you may raise them later during interrogation. That's right. We received a message from Lumidus Harbor that you were going to investigate the Humane Society. We didn't expect to run into you at such a critical moment. While at the harbor, we noticed something else extremely interesting. Apparently, you often used all kinds of excuses to swap your shifts. And if one were to match the times of your shifts to the activities of the Humane Society and those of certain foreign ships, they'd find them to be an exact match. That... that's just a coincidence. Yes, I'm sure you have already thought of a dozen different ways to explain away the suspicious activities, but as far as evidence goes, that should be enough to warrant taking you into custody. Don't worry. If it turns out that the guards are still unable to find any evidence after all this, Lynette and I will do everything in our power to clear your name. <laughs> Although judging by her reaction, I assume no follow-up from us will be needed. <clears throat> the Le Fevers were infamous for using disguise and infiltration to achieve their goals. Who would have thought that they would have planted someone within the guards? Judging from the timeline, they likely arranged for you to enter the guards before the fall of the clan. But they probably didn't expect you to turn it to your advantage and use your job to save yourself during the purge. Not only that, but you actively participated in the interrogation, arrest, and judgment of the Le Fevers during their fall, thus clearing yourself of suspicion. You brutally and cruelly abandoned your allies as soon as they outlived their usefulness, just like a lizard cutting off its own tail in order to live. You've been doing this for years. So... so you played me like a fool after all? Ugh! <laughs> what was that word you used? Ally? You think that someone as foolish as him is worthy to call himself my ally? They were worthless scum, all of them. Not just Bernard and Pierre, but those Le Fevers too. They always just saw me as a tool. I lost all my chances of a normal life just because I was born into their lot. Not only that, but because they wanted me to become an undercover agent, they stripped me of my name, too. I had to live in constant fear of them while they were alive. And even once they were gone, I had to continue to bury my heritage in my name, always worrying that their enemies would come knocking at the door. Do you know anything about what I've been through over all these years? My life as the last Le Fever? I don't, and neither do I care. Are, are you... Are you for real? Aren't you a Le Fever victim too? Elodie, you're the only one still living under the shadow of a name. That's enough. Keep your hands where I can see them and do not resist arrest. If you have more to say, save it for the interrogation room. What a joke. <laughs> what a joke! <laughs> hey! Don't come any closer! What's that? Know what this is? <laughs> I've secretly planted loads of explosives in the Humane Society. Just one step closer and... 
Whether they're cats, dogs, or just unlucky human employees, they'll all be blown up into smithereens. <laughs> Surely you bunch of goody two-shoes won't let that happen, right? What? Hey! Don't do anything stupid! Guards! Gardamex! Phew. So I was right after all. It's easier to deal with the person causing the problem than the problem itself. This is it. Looks like it's just a toy. Guess that's probably why she suddenly flipped and knocked out Bernard. He probably knew that there were no explosives at the society. Well, given that she never even showed her face to Bernard and Pierre, I had my doubts that she'd have gone to the society in person to plant explosives. Thank you for your help, everyone. I'll take them back for thorough questioning, and find someone better to take over the Humane Society. I might need a few statements from everybody. Would you be able to come with me? Uh, if statements are all you need, can Linny provide them on my behalf? I still need to go back and explain some things to the crew. I also had an appointment with the Traveler before we got interrupted. A lot has happened since then. I'm referring to when I invited you over for some tea and also to spend some time with Bonnie. Once I'm done talking with the troop, I'll take Bonnie home and make a nice cup of tea. You'll be able to find us outside of my door. spent a record-breaking amount of time in serious mode today. I can't remember the last time I've seen you like this. Is it because of a special someone? Hmm. Based on information that we found before, Imitation Synth was first circulated on a small scale in Fontaine before becoming a large-scale smuggling scheme. I'd assume that the first offerings of Imitation Synth came from what Pierre made in his early days. But since he was not experienced with running a clandestine operation, he was soon discovered by guard Elodie. Elodie saw the opportunity to make a great profit in his work, and perhaps even the chance of making a new life for herself, so she decided to cover his tracks. She started writing to him in Bernard's name, using what evidence she had compiled and the promise of enormous profits to blackmail him into cooperating with her. Unfortunately for her, she ran into Lynette. Even though my sister doesn't like to focus too much on a regular day, serious mode Lynette is one of the most perceptive people I've ever known. Still, all of that thinking really saps her energy. I need to go give some statements on her behalf, so I'll leave the recharging to you. You can leave the rest of this to me. The other guards will be joining me shortly. Don't worry, they won't have another chance to escape. Hmm... The materials have many other regular uses outside of being used to make imitation synth, so they're not immediately subject to being confiscated or destroyed. The harbor would usually just seize them for some time while the customs paperwork is filled out and approved. If approved, they'd be let through, and if not, they'd be returned to sender. Elodie probably used her position to replace a portion of the shipment with something else before sending the whole shipment back to sender. Given that the foreign merchants who sent in the shipments were probably working with her in the first place, they likely just never reported the difference in what they sent and what they received. 
We will, of course, continue to investigate the rest of the details of this case. Now that we've caught Elodie, figuring out the whole scheme should just be a matter of time. and a cute kitty. Truly the best combo for standby mode. Want some? <laughs> ah, I see she's already starting to snuggle up to you. Not at all. Information is indeed very important, but if you were to try to collect every piece of information you come across, your efficiency would actually decrease. Plus, if you just think about it, what sounds more fun? Writing a statement or enjoying a tea party? Great answer. That'd be my pick too. Had we not run into that case, we could have spent the entire day like this. <sighs> but now I'm running low on both time and energy. You're right. I can sense it. I'm recharging very quickly at the moment. Hmm, something about her rubbed me the wrong way since the very beginning. But to be more precise, it was probably around the time when I saw Bonnie try to get away from her. Elodie tried to get close, but Bonnie deliberately dodged her. Maybe Bonnie had tried to evade her before at Pierre's base. Or perhaps Bonnie just instinctively knew that she wasn't a good person. Not everyone who likes cats is a good person. But if cats like you, you're probably alright. Humans tend to overthink things, but cats rely on their instincts, and they're pretty sharp. I mean, just look at Bonnie. She took a liking to you the moment you met. Fresh fruit, sweeter than syrup. I can understand how you feel. Like you, we are also victims of the Lafayette clan. But if you were to endanger innocence now for your own gain, the public anger towards the Lafayettes would only rise to a boiling point. And the families of the new victims would be dead set on exacting revenge on you. <laughs> and what of it? I'll be your hostage, Elodie. What? Thanks for your concern, Traveler. But we need to end all of the hate and violence arising from this clan once and for all. I'll raise my hands and come over slowly. I promise that I'm completely unarmed. I'm watching you. Don't think for a second you can pull fast one on me. Mm-hmm. That's right. Just keep your eyes on me. Don't look away. know what would happen to you if you were to run away now? The entire Special Patrol would be out hunting for you day and night, to the ends of the world! Once word of that gets out, all the factions in Fontaine would be after you. But if you throw away the device now, I'll still count that as turning yourself in to the guards. Would you rather go back with me now and wait for a trial? Or wait for your enemies to find you? and subject you to the same interrogation techniques that your relatives were once infamous for. No, I... I can't.
That's enough! I have nothing left to say to any of you! Gardamex, get him! Not good. She's trying to escape. We need to end this fight as soon as possible! Busted so quickly, huh? Good thing I've already bought enough time to escape. you understand about any of this? I've suffered years of sleepless nights because of this name. I was sure that the moment I closed my eyes, someone seeking vengeance would descend upon me, calling for my blood. I finally found an opportunity to earn enough money to start a second life and dump this name and all of its baggage onto Pierre. And you just had to go and ruin all of it! I... Uh, what am I supposed to do? Do I even have any choice? 